Okay. Welcome back. We didn't film this on the same day or anything. No, we're okay. wearing completely different clothes. Different day, different time. So, welcome. Uh, previously, we did a tier list of the Disney Channel shows of the 2000s all the way up to like 2010. So now we're going to do the Nickelodeon shows of the 2000s. Nickelodeon and Disney Channel both hold a huge place in our hearts. They were like the main things we would watch every yep. single day. Like whenever the TV was on, it wasn't the news. It wasn't whatever mum and dad wanted to watch. <laughs> it was Nickelodeon. Sometimes it was, but Disney more Channel. in the evening. But yeah. During the day, it was... Constantly. We would watch repeats of shows all the time. I've probably seen every SpongeBob episode at least several ten times. times. Yeah. Maybe more. I don't know. I still remember it now. I put it on um, recently on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Rewatched them. I was like, oh, and I quoted it. <laughs> so this is like a huge part of our childhood. Like this is embedded in our brains. So it's important. This is an important thing. Tier lists are the same as before. We've got still quotes to this day, Beyond Iconic. These are the creme de la creme, the best of the best, the Nickelodeon shows that stood the test of time, still hold up today. And then below that we have one of the greats, you know, it's great. It's one that we would re-watch over and over again, but didn't really didn't really make it into the top tier of our Yeah, memory. when you compare it to the yeah. iconic ones. It's not like, one that we think about up. daily, you know? It holds up, but yeah. it's not on par. And then a good watch is ones that we would watch every now and then, and we'd enjoy it. It wouldn't be one of our favourites, but we'd enjoy it. Half paying attention, you'd put it on, you'd look at the funny, interesting bits, and then you'd switch up again. Background noise was background noise. It was on but you were not watching. It was just there to fill the emptiness, you know. And then trash is get in the bin, terrible show, garbage, rubbish. Get out of the bin. Get out of the bin, <laughs> but then get in it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let you take the first one because you know a lot about H2O. All right, so I've got a little story about H2O. Yeah. I used to watch it when I was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And I used to love mermaids. Do you remember I had my whole you mermaid did. of you were obsession? Obsessed. Do you remember well? we used to go swimming? Yeah. And you, I used to I have to, to, <laughs> to pretend I was drowning and be like, help, help. And then Melissa would come with like a little fin and be like, I'm a mermaid, I'll come save you. Um, but by the time page <laughs> 2 came out, I was no longer in my mermaid phase. I would put it on and it was a good watch. But I recently rewatched it because Netflix put it on. I was like, oh my God, H2O, <laughs> Cleo, Ricky, Emma. Hey, Cleo. Can't really remember the show. Was it any good? Babes, I binged all three seasons in like in a matter of like a few weeks. So it's whenever like, they touch water, they turn into mermaids. Yeah. It? Can you guys give me a hand? She weighs a ton. We can't. If we get wet, we'll grow tails too. Is that what you want? Even Which is just, hilarious because how do they have a drink? How do they drink water? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it was like they'd always get into these like scenarios, but also the episodes followed on from each other and that's why it works so well on mm. Netflix. And I would say it's one of the greats and I enjoyed really? it was it actually as a 27 year old. Is it actually good though? Yeah, it is okay. really good. And like the way like it talks about their friendships and obviously they start dating and it was Australian. Like it was yeah, quite nice to have an Australian show. already gives show. it points. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then there's beautiful shots of like the reefs that they swim under and I watched some behind the scenes and their fins were really heavy. They had to learn how to, they had to be like athletic swimmers to oh. be able to hold. So, it wasn't CGI, it was an actual oh, really? fin. Yeah, really heavy and... That's cool. Okay, yeah, it, so one of the greats? It's, yes, one of the greats. It was okay. so good. The last Airbender Avatar was one of my favourite shows. It was like an anime star, but it's an American company that made it. So it was like introducing people to anime, but it was still Americanized. But the animators were Korean. Oh, really? So it was a Korean animation studio, it's but the writers animation. were American. Yeah. But yeah, it's very influenced by a lot of different Asian cultures. And I just thought it was so cool. Everyone in this world can bend water, fire, air or earth and control these elements. And then there's the Avatar who can control all of the elements. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished and he's the only one in the world that can do it. And it was just so cool watching these characters. It was really, really well animated, especially like the fire bending, watching someone like do that and fire would sort of follow their fingertips. I just remember being a kid and just sitting in my room and pretending like <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's, I think that's so cool for kids to watch because it really like 
opens up your imagination. Like, oh, imagine if I could just like lift the earth and push it. And it's a great story. It was like heartwarming at times. It was funny at times. It was a journey. The characters were all really interesting. I think it's one of the greats. Oh, mate. Well, I never watched it as a kid. I recently watched it on Netflix because one of my friends was like a big fan of Avatar and I was like, you know what, I'll give it a go. It's on Netflix. Why the hell not? It is iconic. Like, I know you really? watched it when you were a kid. Mm. But if you watch it again now, like the fact that it's a kid's show and they pack so much, like all the other mm. messages in there about like war, politics, they keep it like still entertaining. There's like death, there's like devastation, and then there's Zuko who like he goes on this journey where like all he wants to do is reclaim his honour. And so he goes on a journey to find the Avatar with his uncle and Uncle mm. Iroh like and his his wisdoms, like they relate so much to like you as a kid and even now, like just your perspective on things and how he's trying to teach Zuko that the path you're going down is leading you to destruction. It's not the path for you, but he mm. wants him to figure it out himself. In the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. That is the meaning of inner strength. And then his sister, like the contrast between Zuko, like... His sister was sick. I loved his sister. His she sister, was so cool. She could she bend was... lightning. You could see the difference between like how Zuko, he wanted to be like his sister, but he didn't have it in him. Nickelodeon and all the other kids shows, they just play silly, funny shows. Whereas I feel like Avatar was like a real creative piece. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's something that feels like it's made for a mature audience for kids, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, 10 out of 10. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy to put it out there. I so remember good. really enjoying it. It was something that I would always watch. And even though they followed on for each other and I wouldn't always watch them in order, I would still rewatch it because just the way it was animated, just watching people bend the elements yeah, and bend the, the elements, elements cool. was so cool to watch that I would always watch it. So, yeah, mm. 10 out of 10. So next up is The Legend of Korra, which I never watched. This was the sequel to Avatar, and by the time Legend of Korra came out, I was not really watching kids shows anymore, so I never watched it. But you did watch it because you watched yes. Avatar. Yes, I so. was like, wow, Avatar's amazing, and then my friend said, oh, there's Legend of Korra, which follows on. It's set 70 years after Avatar, so Aang has, is dead, but Zuko is in it as an old man, and mm. uh, what's the blind girl called again? Do you remember? Uh, Toph. That's it. She's in it as an old lady. Okay, bring it. And it really didn't hold up. Um, I watched all four seasons, but for me, it was background noise. I had it on while really? I was working, and I, like, it Was didn't it? require needing a lot of attention. Cora herself, she was supposed to be like the complete opposite of Aang, so she was all like run into a fight first before thinking, whereas Aang was a lot more methodical. Yeah, and like sometimes it works, but that didn't. None of the characters were funny. There was like love triangle because it was trying to appeal to like an older audience, more like early teens, I guess. So right. there was a love triangle and then they packed too much political stuff into it right. every single season. Yeah, Avatar was just so freaking good that it just fell flat for me. Next is Fairly Odd Parents, which I think is one of the greats. I remember mm. as a kid, if SpongeBob wasn't on, Fairly Odd Parents would be on for yeah. me. Like they, they were always on. They were always the ones <clears throat> that they would schedule because I think kids really liked them. It was so cool this kid could wish for anything he wanted. It was always a lesson, it's always be careful what you wish for. Because every time he'd wish for something... He didn't want it in the end. Yeah, as the as it went on he'd realise he didn't need the thing he wished for <laughs> and it'd be about him trying to reverse his wish. That was always like the premise of the episode. The fairies themselves were funny, Cosmo and Wanda were a good little They pair. were a good jo duo, like yeah. their jokes were good. And like, and I liked Cosmo. Fairies. We need to have a serious talk about the birds and the Bee Gees. You see, when the Bee Gees recorded Saturday Night Fever, everybody loved them. Then there was a backlash. Too much Bee Gees, they said. Yeah, when they're not fairies, they're fish that live in his tank, which was quite cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd say it's one of the greats. I don't think it's quite iconic because I don't really remember like any of the <clears> quotes from it. It was just good when I watched it as a kid, you know. Yeah, I, I think it was favorites. really good. And I watched most of the episodes because you would put it on. But when yeah. you weren't there, I never put it on myself. Did you not? No, I didn't. Like, mm. I did like Spongebob. But Fairly Old Parents, 
I kind of just preferred watching it with you, I don't know, I just yeah. was like, oh, I'd rather watch That's Our Raven. Mm. So next is As Told by Ginger, which, so I, I remember Ginger, I remember the animation, and the animation is really good. <laughs> it is, but it's just not appealing to look at. Do you remember she had a young brother and he had a, uh, a little, there was like a kennel. He'd go inside and pretend yeah. it was the dog kennel and they'd lead into... That's one of the only things I remember yeah. about the show. So mm. for me it's background noise, I never got into it. I think As Told by Ginger was a good watch. I really good liked job. Ginger. She was about a girl like with her friends, going to school. Yeah, I don't know, I did forget... Did you remember it until I bring it up though? I did, because I forgot about it for ages and then, I don't know how it popped into my head. Her face popped into my head. I was like, "What was that, that face show?" It's nightmarish. <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, it's as told by Ginger." And I started watching some clips, and there was Maisie, the little nasally girl. It's like, "Hey, Ginger." <laughs> Wait until you see the dance moves I've been working up. <laughs> Go, Basie. Go, Basie. Go, y'all, girl. <laughs> I really liked it. I thought it was cute. So you say it's a good watch? It was kind of like an animated version of Lizzie McGuire. It was that oh, okay. kind of... So it was good then? Yeah, okay, I really liked it. it. I don't remember it, so... I think I was more of the demographic. Yeah. But I was told by Ginger. So next is Danny Phantom, which I used to really, really like. It was just cool. He was a boy who could just turn into this ghost phantom thing mm -hmm. and he could go through walls and his hair would turn grey and he'd wear a black suit. It's It was very similar to like Ben 10. It was the similar sort of vibe, but I don't think it was as, success, as successful as Ben 10. Yeah, I had never really watched it's Danny some, Phantom. I saw it when you put it on. It's somewhere between a good watch and half paying attention. I think you actually watched it. I did like it from what yeah. I remember. So yeah, I put it in a good yeah. watch. My memory is just Danny Phantom well. was quite cute as well. When he turned he was, Phantom, he was, yeah. Like, the grey hair looks really good. Oh, but hello. So next up is Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide, which I think is beyond iconic. <laughs> I, I completely forgot about it until I did this list. And then when I remembered, I was like, oh my God, this show is brilliant. Like. Coconut Ned, head. Ned was this tiny little weird boy, and he had his best friend Cookie, who had like these little specks. There's no way I can get hurt now. Oh, Cookie was the and best. And they had like a little chip on the side where he could like do all analytical the stuff. Guy, yeah. He? And then I can't remember much about the girl, but then yeah, he had coconut head. Hey, coconut head. Could you call me Jennifer instead of Moe's, please? You got it, Jennifer. And uh, do you think you could stop calling me coconut head? Get a decent haircut and we'll talk. And it was just his rules on how to survive school, which is great for kids because kids go to high school, they can relate to it, and it's funny, and the characters are all, you know, it's, it's a good show for kids, yeah. do you know what I mean? I think when it first came out, I wasn't fussed about it. I was like, that looks rubbish, I don't want to watch it. And then I think I just left the TV on one day and it came on, and I was like, it's actually not bad. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say it's one of the greats. You don't think it's iconic? To be fair, I did forget mm. about it until I remembered it, if that makes sense. Yeah, so. see, when I put it on in comparison to Avatar, I wouldn't say it's... And compared to the next one we're going to talk yeah. about. So, yeah, okay, one of the <clears> greats. <throat> uh, so, next one, Drake and Josh, which I'm, I think we can both agree goes in oh, beyond iconic. iconic. Freaking iconic, like, that show. Josh Peck is just... A comedy brilliant. genius. He's just brilliant. So funny. And even Drake Bell was fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I never thought yeah. that it'd be so simple, but I found a way, I found a way. It was, it was just so... So quotable. Such a quotable show. So many good characters. Yeah, Drake and Josh's dynamic, which is funny. Drake is the cool guy. Josh is the nerdy loser. Hey, park there. Uh, no, I want to find a spot closer to the door. Why? Because if we park far away, then we might have to walk too far and I could get sweaty. And <laughs> I will not meet Oprah with pit stains. <laughs> Just park the car. Oh, would you let go of my no, wheel? Park the hey, come on! Hey, watch it! Watch it! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my God. oh, my God! 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 Oh, my Yep. And then you had like Helen, who oh, was Helen. the boss for Josh, that and she is always not my job. so Drake never worked to the cinema, but Josh did. She would never remember Josh, but would always remember Drake, <laughs> and it was just always funny. We, 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 
were just trying to make some extra money by selling orangutan kisses and, and dances and You and set up an orangutan business here without asking me? Actually, it was my idea. Oh, well, that's fine then. <laughs> Carry on with your monkey fun. <laughs> and the dad was great. I really liked Josh's dad. Yeah, Walt yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Walter? I mean, Prime like, has... Have a nice day. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what, what to, to do. do. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> or when he's hanging from the gutter because he was trying to find that baby that they lost. He's oh, babysitting. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I deserve this. This is all because I forgot to feed my pet turtle Sheldon in kindergarten. <laughs> he went to heaven and now my life is bad. <laughs> you happy, Sheldon? <laughs> We're even now. Josh? Sheldon! <laughs> 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 from the it's, it's another one like that's the raven where like the characters feel like comedians they're yeah. not just actors they're really genuinely funny people <laughs> and it just worked the script was great the concept was great oh Easy Steve. yes there's so great. many good characters it, yeah 10 out of 10 drake and josh well i recently put it back on because it's on um, amazon prime i still remember the quotes from the show like yeah. i knew what he was gonna say mm. i remembered the plot of it and i haven't seen it in years but it was just so iconic hug me brother mm. hug me brother <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is the amanda show which oh, i kind of want to put this in beyond iconic as well me too it was so good it was really like good. again it's another one that you still quote to this day like oh, my penelope tate yeah my name is penelope tate my name is penelope tate i'm amanda's number one fan please where's amanda i know she's in this skit no. oh, my <laughs> number one fan please <laughs> and then you had um bring out the dancing lobster <laughs> She was like a Judge Judy type yeah. character. And it also had Oh, loads... do you remember um, Kyle? Something Totally Kyle. Yeah. That was Totally Kyle. Totally. <laughs> it was just funny little sketches. And another good thing about it is that it had Nickelodeon stars in it. So you get to see all the people from Drake and Josh. Yeah, and Drake and Josh things. in it. And then yeah. Amanda Bynes, who is also comedy genius yeah i wish she was still about because i think she was so good she's she was so funny mm -hmm. yeah um amanda bynes congrats amanda show 10 out of 10 we used to watch it a lot amanda please next up is cat dog which i always thought was on cartoon network but apparently it was on nickelodeon i thought it was on cartoon network too but yeah but it's uh, this is on imdb maybe <laughs> in america it was but you watched it didn't you i don't, I I don't watch it much. saw a few episodes I don't know, just didn't really interest me. Yeah, so they're a and cat and a dog that conjoined. are joined at the stomach. It's just a bit weird, like, they, they, it looks weird. Like, why, mm. where do they poo? <laughs> like, for me, it was trash. Trash, really? Yeah, because I wouldn't even put it on for background noise. Yeah, but I never even watched it, so. Well, I, I did watch it, but I don't remember it at mm. all, so. Uh, next is Jimmy Neutron, which, so, I think it's one of those shows that has sort of held up today. Yeah. But we were never really into it. No, it was it was all right. If like, it come on, I was like... This man right here, Carl. Carl! He's brilliant. Ah, uh, come on out, Jimmy. I've got fish snackums, the great taste of fried seafood in a bag. <laughs> yeah. but, but uh, what's the other guy called? It. Was it like Shane or Wayne or...? I won't mess up, or my name is Shane Guavera Estevez. <laughs> Something like, that. Something like that. I don't know. And you kind of talk like this. Yeah. You're like a leash. I think it's one of those shows, if we watched it again now, we'd be like, this was pretty funny. But at the time, it was like a half paying attention. Yeah, thing. I same. I don't remember it much. Same. Uh, next is Hey Arnold. I didn't like that. No, I didn't like the, the, the animation. I'm I thought saying. it was quite ugly. I thought it was ugly. I just didn't, it's like didn't like looking at it. Stewie Griffin when he's older. Oh, yeah, in it. And he's yeah. like so flat. And all I remember was, hey, football head. Move it, football head. Oh and girl used to annoy me because yeah. I was like, you fancy this guy, just be nice to him. Why are you always so horrible? Also, the granddad's head is shaped like a penis. Is it? That? It's like the top of his head down to his jaw. <gasps> I remember. Penis. It's like this, isn't yeah. it? I thought you meant like up that way. <laughs> no, no. I remember. Um, trash? Yeah, I yeah. didn't like that show. No. Next is SpongeBob SquarePants, which is an obvious iconic. Still quote it. So I still quote it with Mina to this day. It was always funny. Like SpongeBob as a character is quite annoying. You'd think it wouldn't work. It's very erratic. Like when you watch it yeah. now, it's like, oh, this is so intense. But also, I find it funnier now as an adult. Like, yeah. I didn't laugh at it as a kid. I enjoyed watching it because it was just the bright colours and like the madness. And yeah. then when you watch it now, like Squidward. Squidward is it's the just best character. Hilarious. Here. 
Please hit me as hard as you can. Psst. Squidward, I'm working in the kitchen. <laughs> At night. Don't hold back. And then, like, just SpongeBob. Like, I love when they do those close-ups. Yeah. And it's really detailed and painted. The Krabby Patty is an absolute good. Nobody is immune to its tasty charms. Nobody but me. Are you sure? Does this look unsure to you? So there was funny. some like dark edgy humor in something that's quite silly and bright and colorful like when they did those close-ups it would take it out of just being like a little kid show something a bit weird and creepy <laughs> yeah. but that's that's what kids want to see things don't always have to be bright and pretty and colorful yeah you can have something that's a little bit edgier just thrown in there because you remember it more it, it just made it bigger so than good. what you expected and also the movie was great as well yeah like, david hasselhoff movies... moves his titties out of the way <laughs> So that he can fire like, them back into the ocean so they can get back to Bikini Bottom. How do you how What's do you beat that? Not to like? How do you beat that? And Patrick with his like sexy stockings on Brilliant. at the end. <laughs> yeah, Patrick Iconic. Star said LGBT rights before anyone. <laughs> Apparently yeah. SpongeBob's gay. Yeah, it makes sense. They, they, there was like an article about it. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised either, but it was a bit random. Oh, it's I don't very know. It's flamboyant. It yeah, would make yeah, sense. yeah. It does make sense, but also it's just like but also he's a why, sponge. Yeah, like why, why, why are you putting a sexuality on a sponge? <laughs> it doesn't it's need like that. he doesn't need a girlfriend either. <laughs> like he doesn't need to be straight. You don't need I to think be they're gay. all asexual. It's just, yeah, it's just like. <laughs> It's a kid's show. It's, it's just a sponge. But a regardless, sponge. it's just so funny. Squidward, I think, really makes the show because he's like the straight man. You know, like when you have comedy duos, you have the funny one and then the straight man compliments the funny one to yeah. make it funnier. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Horseradish is not an instrument either. And so it doesn't look like Bikini Bottom is just madness because yeah. if you took Squidward out of it, it's just crazy. It's just like craziness and you just think, oh, that's how they mm -hmm. live. But Squidward is like that normal side of you that's just like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting on my nerves. There's something I've been wanting to say to you since the day we met. Goodbye. Yeah, Imagine SpongeBob as a neighbor. I think I would be Squidward. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah, incredible. <clears throat> I, I, could, I could talk about SpongeBob all day because I think it's, it'll, it'll go down in history as like one of the best. I still relate shows. things to, that I do now to SpongeBob. Like, oh, it's like that SpongeBob episode. Yeah, like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I reset to Mina and she's like, yeah, and then he says this. And then Lauren is like, how do you two remember all this? <laughs> Because that, that was our life. So next is Zoe 101, starring the one and only Jamie Lynn Spears. Who, by the way, Britney's parents are Jamie Spears and Lynn Spears. So they named their daughter Jamie Lynn after themselves. Weird. That is weird. But I think this show is shit. Can you imagine but... if your name was <laughs> Diane Andy? Yeah. Or why have you Diane? <laughs> one just... of the greats. One of the greats? Yes. I loved Zoe 101. It was shit. No, it was so the, good. The theme song was amazing. Do I look good, my dear? Do I look good today? Do I look good today? Now, see, me and Zoe were obsessed with Zoe 101. So when we used to play Bratz, it was literally just a copy of, like, the storylines in Zoe 101. Like, they lived at a boarding school. It was a and good... they would date these guys. I loved Zoe 101. From what I can remember, I freaking loved it. I really liked all the characters. I liked Chase. I liked Michael. There was Dana, and then there was the geeky girl. I can't remember her name. And then there was Logan, who was like the arrogant yeah. guy. But I kind of fancied him. But I was also like, he is a bit of an ass. Um, yeah. It felt a bit too like glitzy, glamorous. I live in LA, and I'm rich, and I'm at this nice school, and I'm pretty. And but you know I mean? wanted to be pretty and be in a school, and and. But does that make it good? Yes, because okay. I lived my fantasy through Zoe 101. I would living put it this in half pain. Fancy. But what would you say? One of the greats. Oh, I, I loved Zoe 101. Should we meet in the middle? Should do a good watch. Good watch, yeah. Yeah. Okay. World Form Breeze, I think, is one of the greats. One of the greats. Yeah. Amazing show. I remember Debbie. Yeah. Debbie was the coolest chick. Yeah. She I love the long hair. Long blonde hair that covered one eye and went all the way down. She's an icon. She's a legend. And she is the moment. Eliza was a little freak. But she was a little freak, her. but like she was so cute yeah. and she loved the animals. And... Yeah, and she could speak to animals. How... Didn't every kid dream of speaking to their pets? I like... wish I could talk to my cat. Yeah, it was such a nice thing to watch because you'd, then you'd watch it and then you'd go up to your dog or cat and be like, hi. And her best friend's the monkey. Is it yeah. Darwin? No, Darwin. that's the little oh. brother, isn't it? Darwin? Maybe. <laughs> 
He's the one that's yeah. like, lay, 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 the crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> they found him in a tree and they're like, we've adopted yeah. this kid. And but the parents were cool. Nigel. Yeah. Oh my God, Nigel. I'll do this with my hands. He... What's his quote that he always says? Smashing. 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 Yeah, oh, maybe Eliza. it's iconic because it is still quoted to this Yeah, day. and I. But I feel like this is getting crowded. Did we put that in iconic then? Because it is really good. I preferred Rugrats to Wild Form I did as well. Okay, yeah, we'll put it so. in one of the great. iCarly. iCarly was. So Miranda Crosgrove, if that's how you say yeah. her name, is just really weird and awkward. She's weird in this show. <laughs> she was great in Jake and Josh, but then she kind of. It was I too much. I think it's that. She was probably at that weird age where you. You feel a bit like, I feel a bit too old for this, but I yeah. feel too young for something else. Do you know what I mean? But do you remember when they do their live shows, they'd be like, Whoa, welcome to iCarly. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just a bit, okay. And like, oh my I'm God, here's Freddy back. and he's yeah. got some goo on his face. Bye. Yeah, it was, it was. Chaos, like just yeah. chaotic energy. Bye, Steven! Oh. oh, yeah. Too much. Far and too it much. was awkward. I don't know, her acting was kind of awkward. That I felt like she f seemed to be too old for the show. Like, yeah. Uh, she was at that weird age. Um, for me, it's hard paying attention. I'd mm. say for iCarly. I agree. And I was a bit older by the time that came out. Yeah, same. So, yeah. Wait. So next is Unfabulous, which I don't really remember. I remember Emma Roberts, but I don't remember what the show was about. I don't remember. Day much after about day it. is unfabulous, and everyone around me is unbearable. Uh, excuse me. I'm gonna be the one unfabulous, instead of unfabulous. So she just goes to school, she has two friends, it's always two friends, isn't it? Yeah, it's always so it's three. One girl, no, two girls, one boy. And the or if, like, or if the main character is a is a boy, then it'll be another boy and a girl. When was that ever a thing? But like, it's declassified. Oh, okay, yeah. You know? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, she goes to school, her life's unfabulous, hence the name, and she like writes songs whenever something's like going wrong in her life, but she was a terrible singer. And she was a mediocre. I mean, she's supposed to be unfabulous, I guess. For me, it was kind of half paying attention. I'd say half it wasn't. It wasn't funny, you know. Like Isn't it that had background noise. Jen? No, I did actually pay like half I did watch attention. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it didn't have the humour that like Ned's Declassified had. So next is All Grown Up, which I remember enjoying because I love the Rugrats. Yeah. But I I don't think it was actually that good. No. Because it didn't run for very long. I liked it because it was good to see them as teenagers. Yeah. Um, I don't remember anything from the show, really. All I remember is that PC game we used to play. Yeah. And we loved it. Um, and seeing Dill not as a baby anymore was a bit like, meh. They because, look really weird. Yeah, they, they just stretch their bodies, and but they still have the big heads. Like, they have the baby heads, but on a stretched out body. <laughs> yeah. I, mm, half paying attention. Half paying attention. Yeah. Is that just background noise? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Then Rugrats was amazing. Iconic. Because we were, this is one of like the earliest memories I have is of Rugrats. Like as, as in like things we used to watch on TV. We used to collect the videos. So you had yeah. loads, then I had loads. And then together we just had like near enough every episode. I had, I had the PS1 games. Yeah. Uh, they were terrible, but I remember really enjoying them because I just loved Rugrats. Do you remember the upside down level where you walk on the ceiling as Tommy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and when you and walk the into, a, one. when you walk into a wall he goes, uh. <laughs> yeah, and it was so annoying. Uh, I'm too little to open it by myself. Yeah, but Reptile was cool. The cast of characters were cool. Phil and Lil. All the movies were great. I Chucky, loved the Paris. Chucky was adorable. Hello. So, moral of the story, Rugrats is beyond iconic, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Shove that in well. Blue's Clues. Uh, I remember watching and really enjoying. It this. was like, it was for younger kids, but I do yeah. remember even when I was older and you were watching it, I did still enjoy it. Like you'd go to the rooms yeah, and you'd find out- We are looking the... for Blue's Clues. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. The animation yeah. was really nice. And then you have the real guy. The actual show was actually really cute and I enjoyed the one of the, the clues. A good watch. Yeah. Not one of the greats, because I don't really think about Blue's Clues often. Yeah. But it was good. Yeah. Uh, and then finally Yu-Gi-Oh, which you didn't watch, but I was obsessed with. I had all the collectible cards. 
Uh, I, it was like the first anime thing I ever watched and I just thought it was so cool. Yu-Gi-Oh had this big old spiky hair and he would battle against all these people with his cards and he was like a pharaoh so like normal Yu-Gi was just like this little mousy little boy and then when he'd duel he, his little What was the necklace, actual plot of Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh. Basically there's these like um, ancient jewellery <laughs> that right. transforms you into a different person and if you collect them all you become the most powerful being and Yugi happens to have one of the necklaces so when he goes into battle he transforms into this ancient pharaoh man and mm -hmm. that battles for him and it, it was just really cool there were some great episodes the card game itself was really fun I had the PS1 game I had a jewel oh I remember thingy. that you had the thing and so you, you were like cards in it's there. time to do 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 yeah. it's time to do 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 I've, I've no idea how you actually play the game. I don't yeah. think I did know as the a kid cards are really confusing. Like yeah. you used to just have that whole album, you click and like I got a shiny one. But it was cool. Like he had a, the dark magician, and then blue eyes, white dragon, the red eyes, black. Dragon. I just remember the theme tune was banging. Yeah, Russia. it was a good. Yeah. Yeah, I I'd it, say it's a good watch. You just want to be banished to the shadow realm, don't you? Yeah. Is it one of the greats? I'd say it was just a good watch. I didn't watch it, so up to you. Yeah. So yeah, that's our list. That's all the Nickelodeon shows. It makes quite a nice little... Yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm happy with that. We have a lot more in the Beyond Iconic than we did in the Disney Yeah. So no, I think Nickelodeon was, was better, yeah. like had better shows. We did enjoy it. I think... I remember watching Nickelodeon a lot more than Disney. I liked Disney because the adverts were really short, do you remember? Yeah, it was just, hey, you're watching the Disney Channel. Yeah, but then I <laughs> liked the shows on Nickelodeon more, but it was just annoying that they had ad breaks. Yeah, the when there were ads, we switch <clears throat> over to Disney Channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely have more fun memories of Nickelodeon. I think it was more accessible for younger kids as well. It had well. a good like mix of stuff, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, more cartoons than Disney. Mm. Disney was more live action. Nickelodeon was more cartoon. So yeah, that's the list. Booyakasha! Peace out. Bye.